going on, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur family. This is Shay Bynes, founder, chief fire igniter of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, along with Phil Bynes, CEO. We're all the way live. You were waiting for the extra. Uh huh. Yeah, I know. I'm always waiting for the extra. <laughs> so we missed you guys last week. I was in Redding, California speaking at the Heaven and Business Conference. Shout out to Andy Mason and the entire Heaven and Business team. They put on a really great three-day uh, leadership summit. Uh, it was just an awesome, every time I go to Reading, it's an awesome time. There's always something memorable uh, that happens while I'm in Reading. There's always just, just awesome encounters with God that I have every single time that I'm there. This time was no exception. So it was just really, really good. So that's why we missed you guys. But we are back this week. And Mr. Bynes had something on his mind that we're going to chat about today. And that's around process, the importance of the process and how yeah, mastery yeah. comes in the process. So Phil, I'm going to pass the mic for you to kick off today's chat. All right. So as I was processing through the process, <laughs> what <laughs> came to me is that, you know, um, first of all, what came was the process is usually simple. But then I was like, well, you know, most people don't see the process as being simple. Right. So why is that? Right. And so as I was contemplating and thinking about it, you know, what God began to reveal to me is that, you know, a lot of times, what we experience in life is we're taught something, right? And teaching is the theory of something, right? You, you can be sure. taught something and it's all theory until you go through the process, you know? And as you're going through the process, that's when mastery occurs over time. So what does that look like? So teaching, I say this theory, you know, but the Bible teaches us to train up a child in the way that they should go. It doesn't tell us to teach a child in the way they should go. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. Why is it that when they get old, they won't depart from it? It's because over time, they've been, you know, going through the process, going through the process. And they wind up finding out that the process is tried and true. You know, right. they get rid of some of the theory that they had and they they begin to see exactly, you know, how to do the thing that they were training to do. Right. And so that, that's a kicking off point. That's where wisdom comes. It's in that it's in that knowing how to apply that part so we can have knowledge. So teaching may give us knowledge mm -hmm. and information and we may gain a level of understanding around it. But that wisdom is that application, that practical application uh, that yields fruit. And so if I'm understanding you right, you're basically saying we've got to, as opposed to just functioning off of just gathering as much information and, and sitting under as much teaching as possible and just giving taught, 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 that we need to walk out the process because that's, that's how we are being trained mm -hmm. in this. I want to go back to something else you said on the front end. Um, you talked about how oftentimes it's simple. I think, did you say the process is simple? Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, the process, the process yeah, is simple. Oftentimes the process is simple, but we tend to overcomplicate it. Mm -hmm. You didn't say that part. I'm saying we tend to, we tend yeah. to overcomplicate mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, what's interesting though, is that you can be taught something and you could overcomplicate. You haven't even done anything yet. Like you haven't, you haven't even started stage one of a process, but you're already overcomplicating it, or mm -hmm. I would call it the mind grind. You're over already over analysis, uh, over analyzing. You're being paralyzed in your analysis, but you haven't even taken a step in the process to begin to actually gain wisdom, or as you said, get to a point, uh, take the steps that are required to get to mastery. And hi, mm -hmm. Linda, good to see you. <laughs> the weird thing here. Good, good to see you guys. Yep. The weird thing that we do is we want to operate in perfection because we feel like, you know, God is perfect. And there's a scripture that says, what, what is it? Be perfect. Um, yes, that's your God perfect. Yes, that's your, yeah, 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 yeah. As your father in heaven. But yeah. what they miss is, yeah, you're supposed to be perfect over time. God doesn't expect us to walk in perfection up front. That's why he gives us things and he he causes us to walk it out before him. See what God does, what he was showing me about the whole, the process being simple is 
God sees the end from the beginning. Right. He already knows the outcome. He knows how it's going to look at the end. And he also knows how you're going to get there. But we have to live our life in forward, not in reverse. We don't have the privilege of, of start, except for we have it in in from the standpoint of Jesus already told us that it's going to work out good for us. We win in the end. Right. But besides right. that, we don't have the luxury of of seeing the end and walking backwards into the beginning. We have to walk from the beginning to the end. And we can't do that apart from God. Right. So that's where the complication comes. God can tell us a thing. He can he can instruct us in a thing. It's simple. But immediately our mind begins to. Well, how is that going to be? How can this happen? And we start to overcomplicate. We start to get the the cart before the horse. And then that's when things become hard. That's when it becomes complicated. And in the instructions that God gave, although it was simple, we begin to ask stuff that was never there. And then yeah. it becomes even increasingly harder, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, we're, yeah. adding, we're adding what's not even there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, go, that's so true. So to go back go um, through like this little process that I was thinking through. So teaching equals theory, you know, training equals the application of the knowledge that 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 you know you're you're working through, right? Sometimes it's some of the theory that someone's taught you or whatever, but you're working through it, right? Right. And mastery only happens in the process. So yeah. some people are trying to be perfect, but they're refusing to go through the process. They'll never get to mastery. And the reason why that is, is because when we talk about theory, theory is always coming from the standpoint of, of perfect situations. If everything is perfect, then this will work. Right. But what happens when things aren't perfect? What happens yeah. when the variables are different? Right. The variables are almost always different than what you <laughs> than what you think they're going to be up front. And you can't foresee all variables, so you have to be able to adapt. That's why the process is so important. But many people will will end the process before they even begin. It yeah, seems too true. hard. Oh, this is too hard. What God is asking me to do is too hard. It's no. too big. I don't have it's enough. I don't know yes. enough. No. What did he tell you to do? Okay, now go back to him in relationship. And find out, okay, so what should I do first? From what this this thing that you told me, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Yeah. That's the beginning of the process. He'll tell you the next step. You worry about the next step. Don't worry about five, six steps ahead. When you worry about five, six steps ahead, you get off into confusion because you're trying to run before God. And he's only giving you bits and pieces because it's almost like it's like the carrot and the horse, right? He wants to keep you on a certain pace. He wants to keep you with him. If he gives you too much, you run off ahead of him and you get yourself into situations that you weren't supposed to be in. I was sharing, I was sharing, um, it was kind of cool because in Heaven and Business last week, I had an opportunity that I've never really had before at someone else's event, which is the opportunity to teach teach and teach again. And so I had three sessions one day after the other during the conference. And on the last day, it was interesting. This is what God did. This is kind of connected to what you're talking about. And so I had an intent for what I was going to talk about for those three days. I was like, okay, Lord, you know, these things are kind of on my heart. I'm thinking this is where you're going. I'm going to do those things after when I, but I, I sensed that the thing that I had on my mind for the third day probably wasn't going to be the thing, but I was like, I think this may be the thing. So I'm just going to run with it unless he changes. The day I did day one, I I was 50% sure that something was going to shift on day three. On day two, at the end of the day two, I was saying to Andy, Andy, I'm pretty sure that I need to do something different tomorrow. And I said, what I believe I need to do is I believe that the two things I taught on day one one and day two, that if I go into day three, I'm going to overwhelm them with a bunch of information when they really need to know more about how to apply what I just shared. And I can share with them through story about how, I, how, how I've applied. Giving people frameworks, but not blueprints, because God's got blueprints. I don't have your blueprint. I'll say that over and over and over again, right? So the third day was so awesome because that's exactly what I did. And one of the things that I shared in that third day was how, how the Lord had given me, when, when I was not no longer the CEO for Kingdom Driven LLC, and now it's like, okay, Lord, what does this look like? What am I doing? What's going on? After I came back from sabbatical, the word the Lord put on my heart was that it was a season for to invest. Well, that's a big word. 
it's a word that means a lot of different things. So, okay. So God gives me this big thing. Now it's, I could have been like, I could have done two things. I could have said, really, I could have done three things. I could have said, okay, he said invest. I could have operated out of presumption and just assumed all the investments over all the things and just chose the things that I want to invest in, not even really seeking him concerning what that looks like and just gone off to the races. I could have also said, wow, that's a big word. Oh, I need to wait for him to just, I'm going to wait. And when he eventually unpacks that for me, I'll take a step because I would hate to invest in the wrong thing. I would hate to invest. I didn't do either of those things, but those are two very common scenarios. What I did, what I said, and I gave, I gave this example because I wanted to know how this is how I walk it out, right? I had this word from the Lord. The first thing, because I care about words, I think they mean something. The definitions mean something. The first thing I did was I went to go look up what the word meant. What does invest mean? And then as I'm look, looking up the dictionary definitions of the words invest, it was like a couple of those definitions were standing out to me. It was almost like the words popping off the page. And I'm like, okay, so Lord, as it relates to this definition of invest, you know, what's on your heart? And so that was, I was able to ask some questions pose some questions, seek his heart concerning those things. And then as a thought would come, I didn't overanalyze the thought. I would say, hmm, okay, that, okay. So I think this is perhaps what he's saying for this definition of invest. I'm going to take a step forward on this. And I just believe he'll confirm as I go. Like I've been doing this since KDE started. In 20, like I still do the same thing today that I did back then, which is if it's so big or it just doesn't have enough details or if it doesn't, whatever, I don't want to run far ahead. I want to stay in lockstep with him. So if it's not something that's already in the rhythm of what we're doing, I'm like, wait, pattern interrupt, invest in what, invest in whom, what does that look like? What does that mean? And I want to sit with him, but I want to steward that, steward that by going through the process. So I've literally been trained by going through the process of walking this partnership with God out, which I wouldn't call mastery level yet, but I would say relatively high level of walking that out now, right? But I'm still doing that, but I, I never would have a level of confidence that I hear him well and can respond and work with him well and that I've aligned my dreams with his dreams, my heart with his heart, if I wasn't willing to just steward the little things instead of waiting to be taught more, taught more, teach me more, teach me more, teach me more. And I need more before moving. That was yeah. a whole lot, but mm -hmm. that no, was, and it was good. That was good. And I was, as you, <laughs> as you were speaking, I realized that what you were saying goes right into the next point that I was going to um, mention. So What's that? I was saying that it's simple, you know, to walk out um, God's instructions but it becomes complicated when we add our own piece to it. We add our own right. spin. Right. And the next point that I had was spin is inevitable apart from walking with God, apart from relationship. If you're not in lockstep, if you're not in relationship and in, it's inevitable, you're going to have some type of spin to what God said. That's not in alignment with God. He says that my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So as soon as you get away from his thoughts and his ways, you already put a spin on something that God never intended. Right. And so that's the important of like we say all the time around King, kingdom driven entrepreneur. It's about with God, not for right. God, not just for God, because doing all the things we, for God. Yeah, when you right. when you were doing things for God, now you put your own spin. God, yes. I'm bringing this to you because this is what you want. Right. This is what you want. It's like I didn't tell you that <laughs> this is what you think I want. So you put your own spin on it because you're not with God in the moment. You're doing stuff for God and you can mess a whole lot of stuff up doing things for people that they never told you they wanted to have done, let alone God. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so even that very thing that you just said, one can complicate. So we're, we have a teaching point here of doing business with the presence of God versus just operating like I'm doing all the things in my own strength for the glory of God. And people will also overcomplicate that. It's why I could only teach for two days on the topic and I couldn't teach a third topic. I had to go back 
so that we could walk out so I can give examples of how, so they can know what this training can look like because we will, because that is an example of something very simple to being with the presence of God is simple. Sitting with the Lord on something is actually simple. Having a conversation with the Lord, these things are simple in nature. And they're also simple in practice. But if we think, because we're overthinking, that it takes so much more than that, or we overcomplicate the relationship that we have with him, then, then we get, we take that simplicity and overcomplicate it. So if we, as a kingdom driven entrepreneur, if we overcomplicate that, we're going to overcomplicate everything because that is right at, that is at the absolute foundation is mm -hmm. with God. Yeah. And you can, and here's some signs that you can kind of tell that you are, um, you're not thinking about the things that God asking you to do as being really as simple as they are. And you're not necessarily communi communing with them in a way where you can understand how simple they are is when you begin to say things or you begin to make an excuse for yourself. Well, sure. That's easy for you to say, Shay Bynes. That's easy for you to say, Phil Bynes. You know, you're, you have this movement called kingdom driven entrepreneur. Well, guess what? When we started out, we didn't, didn't even know what a kingdom driven entrepreneur was. We didn't have a movement. When we started out, even in the things of God, it's not like I grew up in the church and I had all this wealth of information. No, but what God does is he deals with this based off of who we are. He yeah. knows us. He knows our form. He knows everything about us. So when he begins to speak to us, he speaks to us out of the place of knowing us. Yes. So what we need to do is get used to knowing him, knowing his characteristic, knowing how he speaks to us, knowing how he's designed you, because out of that place is how he's going to speak to you. So like, I mean, if people have been following for a while, every time I'm speaking, I, I say some, so there are some things that come out of my mouth very often. I say, I see connections, right? Because I've recognized over time that I see different connections that other people don't see. That's part of how God made me. I acknowledge that's how he makes me. I speak that. And so he makes, he gives me even more connections to see, right? More perspectives to see. I also say about me fathering this movement, right? Oh, God's called me to father the movement. And I'm speaking out of that place because what I'm doing is I'm reminding myself, okay, this is what he spoke to me in our intimate time when yeah, we were talking. Yeah. And if he told me this, it's, it's, for, it's for this season. Yeah. He told me it's for this season and he'll tell me something different when he wants me to, to begin to focus in on something different. Yeah. And that but comes from a place of being with him. Yes. Right. But go ahead. I was going to say, you're not going to change the subject. You're going to focus on the thing that he's speaking to you about, unless yeah. there's something else. Yeah. Right. Because he'll come and he'll say, okay, yeah, yeah, that's good, son. But this is what I want to talk to you about now. And when he does that, now everything comes out of the lens of, okay, this is what, because he, he made it so plain and so clear that I want to highlight this. He sent four or five different people maybe even six or seven different people to talk about how much I'm a father in different perspectives of, of me being a father. Yeah. So when he, when he does that much highlighting of something, there's a very distinct reason why you're telling me that. Why is that Lord? Okay. I get it. I get it now. I'm a father. Okay. Why, why are you telling me that? And then eventually he says, Oh, because I have you the father, father of this movement, you know? Okay. What, well, what does that what mean? Does that like? What does that mean? Right. <laughs> I have to, I have to have, ask follow-up questions. This is yes. what we don't do with God, right? but this is what we should do in relationship. And if we're yes. in relationship with God, you should treat him the same way that you would treat anyone else. Well, I heard what you said, but what does that mean? Help me understand that. What do you mean when you say, you know, um, I'm a father, help me. What does a father do? You know, and then he spoke to me about a father in, you know, in parts, a father creates security a father, you know, all these different aspects of what a father does. Right. So now I have a new a new thing. OK, so as a father of this movement, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this and I need to do that. And as he adds more stuff, I'll add it to my list of things to do. So that's how I know that I'm in lockstep with him when I'm doing the things that he's already spoke to me. The simple instructions until he tells You're doing me with father, what I'm doing with invest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You just walk through the same process that I walked through. Mm -hmm. 
We have to ask the questions. We have to be in communication. You don't get to, I don't, I didn't get to learn who Shea Bonds was without hours of conversation when we, because we didn't even go to the same college. We right. started dating in high school. We went to different colleges in order to keep from growing apart. We talked on the phone every week. We talked on the phone every week about all type of things. So I got to hear your heart on what you thought about so many different things until the point where I learned who you are. It's the same thing with God. When he speaks to us, we need to have a conversation with him. Well, so what does that look like for you? And how have I been doing this? And all, you know, all these different things. But a lot of us, we don't do that because we don't, we don't embrace the process. We want to run ahead with our thoughts of what we got from the process, what we think God is saying. Or what someone run. else's blueprint was. Oh yeah. Or what someone else's blueprint was. Because that's easy. It's easy to, that's, that's easy in your head. But what we're saying is, is also not, I mean, it's simple. There's a difference between simple and easy, but it's like, it's, 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 it's easy for someone to say, Hey, I'm just going to go do this. Cause you know, well, I see that work for that person. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to go run and I'm going to go do this. Right. Because if that person's, cause then they, they can say, okay, well, I'm just going to go do that because they're 20 steps. If I just do those 20 steps, I'm good. But the same person who says that, and I'm not saying this, none of this is judgment, by the way. It's just, it's, it's just reality. It's facts. And I've been through it. All right. So it's easy to just say, I'll just do that. Oh, because they've just laid out the whole blueprint for me. So I'll just do those 10 steps. They taught this. And so they taught these 10 steps. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do those 10 steps. Whereas it's, it's like to sit with the father on something, to have to converse, to have conversation, to even to do the work of learn, of growing in intimacy and learning how you hear him, how he engages with you, how he speaks to you through the word, like all of those things. It's like the investment in that aspect is of extraordinarily higher value because he's the source. And so if you're thinking, Oh, well, it's just easy to take this approach. I know you said that's simple, but this is easy. It's like, well, no, go do the simple thing. And you may not consider it easy to grow and in cultivating intimacy with God. You might not find that easy, although it is simple. You may not find it easy because there could be other hangups going on. There could be other stuff going on. But you know what? He's also the source to work through all that stuff. So you can either hold and carry all that stuff. And then go do something else that has nothing to do with being in alignment with God, or <laughs> you could focus in on cultivating intimacy with God, even when you don't consider that to be easy, although it is simple. Mm -hmm. And that's a, and many times that's the whole reason for the process. He's yes. trying to process some things out of us. Is is not just about it's not about the result. This is the thing that I think we do as Christians too too often. We're we're too or human beings. Period. We want to look at the result and we judge things based off of getting a certain result when right. the gold is found in the process. In the process. It's, it's not in the results. The results will come. Right. It's the process that God is interested in because in order for you to maintain whatever God gives you, you're going to have to be a new person to, to, to maintain it. So, yeah. for example, if God is going to call me to be a millionaire, and all of a sudden, I just get a million dollars. I haven't been processed to handle a million dollars. So I can get the results of a million dollars. And like all the tragic stories you hear about uh, people that win a lottery, I could be broke in a year. Why is that? Because I didn't go through the processing that was required to be able to steward a million dollars. The gold of the whole, the gold of the whole thing is the process. Because if I've gotten a million, if I went through the process to get a million dollars and if all of a sudden I'm broke, guess what? I know the process to get to a million again. Right. You hear stories all the time of people that are millionaires and they've gone broke. They went bankrupt and then they became millionaires again. Why is that? Because they've been through the process to know how to become a millionaire, even if they make one bad mistake and it causes them to go into bankruptcy. They have the process. You can't take that away from them. They can get back to the million. Right? And they build capacity for it. Yeah. And so, and once mm -hmm. you have that, you have that. It may be applied differently, different scenarios, different situations, different timing. Mm -hmm. Something goes down, something comes back up, you know, whatever, but they've built the capacity for that. And so, and how do you do that in the process? Mm hmm. Yeah. 
So I think we really have to embrace that. But it's like, but which, but which process? What we're saying is as a kingdom driven entrepreneur, the process to embrace is the process of learning how to walk and work and live and do all things with God. Let that be the process that you cultivate because it is the foundation for everything else, <laughs> everything else. When I have conversations with, when I speak and I have conversations and all the people that come up and want to talk about certain things or their unique situations, their unique, the, the unique reasons why this is hard for them, the unique reasons why that sound, they don't ever say that sounds great for you, Shay. They don't, they don't say that, but that's kind of what they're saying without saying that, like, that's great for you, but you know, here's my story. Here's, you know, here's what's complicated for me. Every, and I mean, without fail, I've never come across a unique, I've been doing this for now. I don't know how many years Spe speaking on grace of a grind since the book came out. So for three years, I have never heard something so unique that my simple response is not still the response for not once, not once. See, the thing is, they haven't been through the process, so they haven't encountered the different variables to see what works for different right. stuff. So they haven't mastered, you know, they haven't gotten to mastery. So because they're, they're still, overthinking that part. Yes, and so they're still they in the mind. That right. Yeah, they're still in the mind about it. And it's, it's right. fine to be in the mind. To yeah. them, it's still theory. But what do you do with theory? Hmm, that's interesting. This person said that. Let me, it's like the Bible says, you know, Put put these things that the Lord is 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 giving you to the test and see. It's, it's like what was the scripture about? Um, we talk about um, when when it's giving time a lot. Um, it's like put this to the test and see if I don't pour you out you're a blessing. Uh, you don't... Are we talking about bring all the tithes to the storehouse? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. See if I but, don't open I mean, up the windows of heaven. Yeah. So okay, God yeah. is tell, telling us to when it in concerning this thing. Just give give the process a chance and see if I don't do something with it. I understand that this is complicated. I understand you don't understand how this seed time and harvest is going to work. But I'm telling you it works. I'm placing before you the option of life and death. Choose life. Let me tell you what life looks like. Bring the bring the offering, offering and the tithe to the storehouse and see if I don't pour you out a blessing. Test me in this. He even gives you permission to test them. Right. And so it's the same thing when you're hearing uh, a new revelation or you're hearing um, someone else's testimony and they're giving you some gold. It's like if you don't believe it, well, let me just give it a try. Let me let me put some of these things to the test. First of all, do I see it in the word? Yeah, I can see examples of this in the word. OK, well, let me put it to the test. Let me see if it works in this situation with this variable. Then you. Oh, shoot. It worked with this variable. Check. With this variable, it works. I've learned that through process. <laughs> right. Hmm, I don't know about this. This seems kind of hard. Let me try it with this. Huh. It worked with that. Check. Like you're checking off all the particular variables and you get to the point where, look, everything that I've seen, it doesn't matter what it is. I've seen that this works. That's mastery. Like one of the things that made me think about process again is I, I'm, I have these new contacts, right? In the beginning, when I first got the new contacts, contacts, yeah, you know, they were instructing me on how to put them in my eye. And so I'm, I'm trying to do the things they're saying. They say I should lean my head completely parallel. I should do this. I should do that. And I would try to put the contacts in. It would take me 30 plus minutes to put contacts in my eyes. Because yeah. I have these special big contacts, right? So they're even harder than the, the typical contact. Right. And then all of a sudden, in my fourth week or fifth week, I started hitting the point where I could put it in. I can almost feel where the, how it's aligned. I can put them in my eye and I can do it on the first shot. Yeah. I may not always do it on the first shot. Why did that happen? Sometimes I'm putting it in my eye and I'm not even in perfect position. All the things that theory, okay, the theory is you should be like this, you should be like this. In this ideal situation, you can get the contacts in your eye. Well, what happens when I'm off a little bit? What I've dis discovered over time with the process is I can feel while I'm off and I can feel how to adjust in that moment. So right. I got it in my, oh, it's not quite right. I tilt my head now. No one ever told me to tilt my head. That came from the variables, 
Right. And if you weren't willing to go through that process, you just give up and go get some glasses. Forget mm -hmm. these contacts that are actually like uh, you, you, your eyes were really, really bad. Forget yeah, I, this. Glasses I'm going to settle for anyway. less than God's best. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to settle for, I'm going to settle for what's less than what would be really great for me. And I'm going to go and just do this because I don't want to, I don't want to work through this process of how to get these contacts in. Right. This just doesn't, this just doesn't work for me. This I'm doesn't work. This doesn't work. Right. I'm going to get some glasses and, be, and not be able to see in my, through mm. my glasses. Like I already. Or, can or go get through. surgery. Right. Go, or go, go get something right. more complicated. Right. Right. I'm going to get surgery because the contacts just ain't working. Right. That's, but that's you went through the process. And it took you some, it took you a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But I still had graduation points along the way. Eventually I get them in my eye. It's just not as simple as what they say. The theory wasn't working. And then eventually right. I'm like, oh, I see what they mean by this theory. Okay. And yeah, that applies if I do it like this or it applies if I do it like that. Right. Yes. That's stuff that you learn during the process. You can't yes. get it by theory. Alone. That's right. And we, this is exactly what we talked about with igniters when I did a session with the, the ones who are in the uh, start and profit stage when we were talking about business models. And I'm like, your business model is a theory. It's an experiment. It's only a thought until you've done something like you don't really know. So you can tell me about your business model until you, until you blew in the face, but it is just a theory. You haven't done nothing yet. It's a theory. It's an experiment that you have not even experimented with yet. So just know that it's that so that while you walk it out, you have a proper mindset concerning it. Right. I think yeah. about my, I went to graduate school. I got my MBA and there was such a huge difference between my faculty members who had worked. You could tell, like you could tell the difference between my faculty members who had walked out the thing and practical application of what they were teaching us and the ones who had not. It was so obvious. What they had to impart to us was so different in terms of how powerful it was, how impactful it was based off of whether they just had read all the books, knew all the theories, but hadn't done it yet in a practical setting, or maybe they did it in the perfection of some lab setting or something, but they hadn't done it with all the variables of all the people and all the things. Cause it was, it was an MBA. Right. So maybe they'd done some things in some kind of perfected lab environment. But the what but the faculty members who had really been in the trenches, they had either owned businesses, they had led large organizations. You know, when we were doing the law thing, the one who it's like, I have actually watched, I have been involved in the process of seeing legislation. Like there was a huge difference in mm -hmm. the value of what we received from them and our ability to take it and do something with it based off of whether they were teaching us theory or whether they were really beginning to speak out of their training that they've experienced. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we miss is sometimes the training we have is not, it's still only theory. We, right. People are saying it as if it's facts. Yes. But quite frankly, there's a lot of stuff that's still theory, you know? And theory is never going to produce what it's supposed to produce because it can't it can't account for the variables. <laughs> it's so we've got to work it out, and we've got to yeah. work it with God, with the mm -hmm. source. Yeah, we have to go, Mr. Bynes, because you need to pick up our daughter. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So we've got to go. We have some folks here. Hey, Shelly's here with us. Hey, Shelly. Edna's here. Hi, Edna. Mm -hmm. Linda said, I learned the hard way with settling. Now I embrace the process. Amen. You don't have to settle. That's why I always say experience God's best. Experience God's best. In order to experience God's best, not just like whatever we're thinking, but his best, we really do want to embrace the process of learning how to live, walk, work, do all things with him, the with factor. Mm -hmm. And can I say one more thing? Yeah, I got to get in position for this. Look, <laughs> God meets you where you are. Stop worrying about what you haven't achieved yet. He meets you right where you are and he works from there. Okay. Amen. Amen. This was a Holy Ghost backdrop from, okay. from, right. from Phil Bynes. Amen. <laughs> I just wanted them to get that. Like, I'm yes, I'm going to hold the screen. You're going to look me now. in my in my two mm -hmm. eyeballs yeah. that I put my contacts in real good on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> he will meet you where you are. Like none mm -hmm. of this is a grind. Embracing the process isn't a grind. You don't grind your way through the process of learning how to live, walk, work, and do all things with God. 
that is by his grace. Mm -hmm. You don't grind. You don't grind for grace. Let me grind for the grace. It makes no sense. I'm gonna go on a whole nother tangent. So we're gonna go right now. Yeah, we better. But this let it was go. super good, Mr. Bynes. Thanks for sharing. Althea says, I will be embracing the process. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Phil, hey, we don't normally do this, but mm -hmm. will you pray before we go? Yeah, pray, sure. pray for the people. Father God, we just thank you for the hearts of your blessed, your beloved. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, that today they will get that the process is all about relationship with you. And Father God, they'll embrace the relationship that you're calling them into, the invitation that you have before them. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, that today we are breaking off the mindsets and the, and the shackles that come with the mindset that we have to be perfect. No, Lord, we know that all we have to do is show up with a heart prepared to do what you're showing us to do in the moment, and you'll make all the other things happen, Father God. It's by your grace, it's by your power, it's by your might that all this stuff will happen. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, you guys. We will see you around next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. And if you're new to Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurs, it's the first time you like hanging out on our page, hanging out with us live, make sure to go to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com and get further connected with us. Um, there's rapid fire emails that are just inspiration and encouragement that go out. We have the podcast, we have courses, mentoring, all kinds of resources available to you to help you walk this thing out business with God and have a greater kingdom impact through the work that you do in the marketplace. So you guys take care and we will see you around. God bless you.